Hi everybody, my name is Dr. B and today's topic is fentanyl versus heroin, a dangerous difference. I hope you join me in my mission of changing the perception of addiction together by clicking the subscribe and notification bell. If you or a loved one needs help with addiction, please call me personally at 1-800-779-4715. Okay, let's get right into it. The title of this video and the question proposed to me is fentanyl versus heroin, uh, what are the differences? And uh, that is, this is broken up into three questions that was presented to me. Number one, how are fentanyl and heroin different from one another chemically? Number two, how is the use of fentanyl and heroin different? And number three, which is the one that I think is the most important one that I wanna get across, why is fentanyl so dangerous? Uh, so the first part of the question is, how is fentanyl and heroin different from one another chemically? Again, with this question, uh, I want to give uh, uh, shift the question a little bit and ask the question, uh, really, uh, what are the uses of fentanyl? And I think this is important because it is so pervasive in the media out there right now as a very dangerous drug and a killer and people's initial presentation with the concept of fentanyl uh, comes through the overdose epidemic of opiates. And I'm gonna use the term opiates, even though that means uh, natural uh, opium products versus opioids, which is synthetic. Throughout this video, I'm gonna use the term opiates. So again, uh, fentanyl has uh, been now known as a very dangerous drug of abuse of overdose and death and being more responsible for heroin for overdose deaths. So I want to go back and kind of readjust our frame of perception of what these things are. Number one, uh, I'm gonna use morphine as a third drug of comparison. Uh, essentially, all of these drugs are the same thing. They're the opiate class of drugs or opioids if they're synthetic and these are all kind of made in a lab, but I'm gonna use opiates, the term opiates. Uh, morphine is essentially a natural opiate that's processed. From there, we can go to heroin, which comes from morphine actually, and we call it a semi-synthetic opiate. And then we can go to the full synthetic class, which amongst many, including dilated or methadone, we have also fentanyl. It is a fully synthetic opiate. There's differences in strength, and I'm going to, we use equivalency charts to compare these. Heroin is, I think, about two to five times stronger than morphine. Now, when you go to fentanyl, it's a hundred times stronger than morphine. That's a major difference. So the same amount is a hundred times stronger than morphine. It's good as a clinician and when we're using pharmaceutical grade products to understand these differences. Now let's take all three of those drugs. And all of those drugs have very positive therapeutic benefits in the right medical setting using the pharmaceutical grade product. I'm going to give you an example because my background is critical care emergency medicine type of things. And who uses fentanyl? Again, although we come across it now in the public perception as a dangerous drug of abuse, fentanyl is not dangerous when used in the clinical hands under supervision and at the pharmaceutical grade dosing because all we do is an equivalence to what we would use otherwise, maybe in some cases morphine. In fact, there's countries that still use heroin, pharmaceutical grade, for pain management of different kinds. Fentanyl it has a lot of value, not because it is so much more potent than morphine, but because of certain properties it has, like the quick onset of its effects and the fact that it wears off quickly. For example, gastrointestinal doctors use it for procedures because it comes on fast, goes off fast, and they can send the patient home that same day. In fact, it's ubiquitous 
and short procedural sedation and pain management across the board because of that property. In the emergency department or in the ICU, we also use it for the same reason. Let's say I have someone that comes in a car accident and I'm not sure what sort of brain trauma they have had. And I'm waiting for the neurosurgeon to do his assessment after I do my assessment. I need to keep this person intubated in a tube down their throat breathing. I need to keep them sedated uh, to some extent and I need to keep them pain-free. I choose fentanyl because I can turn off that fentanyl drip quickly and it wears off relatively quickly. So whether it's the neurologist or the neurosurgeon, he can do a quick bedside neurological examination that gives them closer to true to life answers without the medication being on board that may affect his exam. In that case, opiates and sedation medication. So I think what I'm trying to point out here is that in the right clinical setting and using pharmaceutical grade, these are great drugs that clinician can use the different properties in this case that it's fast onset, fast offset to get the desired effect. In this case, sending someone home or sending uh, or having someone being reevaluated neurologically by another clinician and he wants to get the best answer possible. It's also used in chronic cancer pain for uh, cancer doctors or pain management doctors and it comes in different forms. It comes in a patch where it's a slight release throughout the day. It also comes in lollipop form. And all of these have been used and abused by different people at different times, whether they're chewed upon, whether they're taken in different routes. But my point is, in the right clinical setting, this medication, fentanyl, is wonderful. It is much more powerful than morphine, and it is much more powerful than heroin. But in these settings, we're not necessarily using it because it's a more powerful drug. In fact, we're using an equivalent dose to what we would use if we were going to use morphine, for example, to get the effects we need. It was discovered in the early 60s, <clears throat> and it's a fully synthetic opiate. Chemically, this is how they're different. They're not very much different, actually, if you look at the very fundamental structure, and I'm not going to go into that. Remember, I try to bring science, clinical experience, and sort of distill this down to you for basic information. The chemical structures are about the same with certain differences that make this a fully synthetic opiate. The second question, how is the use of fentanyl and heroin different? I explained that in a clinical setting as far as in terms of abuse and what's going on in the streets now, they're not much different. It's used as an opiate. It's used in the same way that heroin is used either intravenous use and oftentimes smoked, sometimes even snorted, and you will see it mixed with the pills. All of those routes of use are possible with fentanyl and they're used for abuse, so there's not much difference when you're using it for the purpose of getting high versus how we use it in a clinical setting. I think the most important question is why is fentanyl so dangerous? And I do think there's a lot of confusion about this and misunderstanding out in the street and with parents coming to me or addicts coming to me. Sometimes I'm sitting there talking to a patient or a parent and I'll be saying, okay, and how long has he been using the heroin? And I use heroin without thinking as a general term for opiates. They're very quick to correct me. No, he's using fentanyl. Clinically, that doesn't make any difference to me in terms of the addiction issues. It does concern me more sometimes, to some extent, for the overdose potential, and I'm going to get into that in a second. Number two, you have to keep in mind, it doesn't make a difference for another reason, because the products out there now are cut so many times with so many different things, you might be taking a pill that you might think is a Roxy, but it might have fentanyl or heroin or MDMA or anything else in it. You might be smoking or doing heroin and it might have some fentanyl in it. Or you might be 
doing fentanyl and it has heroin or some other drug in it. So it really doesn't matter in that term, in that way. It's just all opiates to me and the treatment is going to be the same. So people are often very quick to point that out, but it doesn't make a difference clinically. Number three, uh, I think a related question where people worry is that someone's really kicked up their use to fentanyl versus heroin. They look for fentanyl and there are those cases. Remember, this is a general answer. Is it more addicting? Does it mean you've stepped up in your addiction, let's say traditionally from pills to smoking it, to intravenous use, to heroin? To me, it doesn't because there's no solid evidence that fentanyl is more difficult to get off, is more addicting than heroin. Uh, there's uh, a lot of anecdotal data out there. Mainly people will be talking about it on the internet. Oh my God, I was on fentanyl. Some people will even say to me, this stuff lasts a lot longer. Aside from all of that, the data doesn't tell me that one is that much different from the other, whether it's fentanyl or heroin. It is much more deadly, absolutely much more deadly. Why is it more deadly? Is it simply because it's so much more powerful? Well, I just said, when we use it in a clinical setting, we are using pharmaceutical grade fentanyl and the doses are equivalent measured doses. Why fentanyl is so deadly is because A, it's a much smaller dose than heroin or morphine or the pills that can really push you on the overdose and respiratory depression limit. And B, that dose is not measured in a pharmaceutical industry standard lab. Essentially, what I'm saying is you have a lot smaller material to work with and you don't know where this stuff is coming from, whether it's a uh, farm or a, a, a sort of a makeshift laboratory somewhere in Mexico, South America, the United States, China. The issue here is that it can kill you a lot quicker if you mismeasure and pack the wrong dose. And the material you have to work with is a lot smaller than let's say heroin or morphine or any of the other pill oral products. That's what makes it deadly. Other than that, there's no particular property of fentanyl except the fact that it's so much more powerful, but more importantly, it's not coming from a pharmaceutical grade laboratory where the appropriate equivalent dose is measured to heroin or morphine. This is exactly the issue for all of the comments that I got from my Kratom videos with using quote unquote Kratom. When I say the word Kratom, I'm referring to whatever it is that you're buying on the internet, whether it's the right product, whether it's mixed with another product, and whether it's the correct dosing, this is what I am referring to Kratom. Now, I'm not comparing Kratom to fentanyl in terms of its addictive properties and its overdose properties. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying the problem with Kratom, whether the natural Kratom has any therapeutic benefits, which I believe it does, that is not what is being supplied out there in public. And that's what makes Kratom dangerous, A, eh? We don't know what's in the product. We don't know the exact doses. B, it's not being given to someone under a doctor's care, whether you think doctors are just as bad as drug dealers, or under clinical settings, and it's not pharmaceutical grade. I think it's a wonderful analogy. And again, no, I'm not talking about its deadliness, its addictive properties, its overdose properties. I'm talking about when you talk about Kratom 
as a lay person out there making your own decisions, because I have dozens and dozens of patients talking about what Kratom did to them and how dangerous it was. I'm simply referring to whatever product it is that you're buying out there that is not pharmaceutical grade, given under a doctor's supervision or in clinical settings. And so the problem with the fentanyl causing so much overdoses is that it's not pharmaceutical grade. The dosing and the measurements are not equivalent to the heroin or morphine. And it's not under a doctor's obviously supervision or clinical setting. I have dozens of videos on opiates and Suboxone. All you have to do is click the link above. In addition, if you're interested, please, please subscribe to the channel by clicking the subscribe button and ringing the bell. Have a wonderful day.